Hello everyone and welcome to the final online content of the semester. Uh, this video is going to all be about constraint analysis. So we'll talk about what constraint analysis actually is. We will uh, derive and analyze something called the master equation. Uh, we'll also add in some constraints for takeoff and landing and then we'll do an example where we put all of this together at the end. Okay, so what is constraint analysis? Well, let's say that we're designing a new airplane um, and we have a long list of design requirements and constraints about how we would like the aircraft to perform. Well, um, we need some way of, um, we need some method uh, in which to put all of these constraints and requirements together to identify what's called a solution space or a design space where um, we can design our airplane to satisfy all of those requirements at the same time. And this is um, typically not obvious um, if we have a list of performance requirements like uh, turning and climbing and uh, landing and takeoff distance requirements and so on. So um, the constraint analysis method allows us to consider all of our design options and constraints at the same time um, and this is done by using something called the uh, master equation which ultimately can be plotted on a graph to, to identify uh, our solution space. So um, we're going to look at something here called uh, the master equation and this is found from modifying uh, the equation that we've seen previously for specific excess power. Uh, but here we're going to make a couple of simple replacements to make this equation a little bit more general. So our T term, our thrust term, uh, we're going to replace with alpha TSL. So um, alpha is something called the thrust lapse ratio. Um, so basically how much thrust we lose uh, as a result of altitude. So you'll see there that the thrust lapse ratio alpha is dependent on rho over rho so at sea level. So a ratio of uh, density at altitude versus density at sea level. And also the Mach number. Then secondly we're going to replace our weight term W with uh, beta multiplied by WTO. So WTO being the weight at takeoff and beta um, being uh, the weight fraction. So basically how much the aircraft weighs at that specific moment in the flight uh, having burnt fuel for example. So it's a fraction of its takeoff weight. Uh, the third replacement we're going to make is with our drag term. So this is nothing new, we've seen this before, right? Just the drag coefficient multiplied by dynamic pressure and wing reference area. We've seen that expansion before. And then uh, finally we're going to replace our lift coefficient uh, with our expression that we derived last time based on the load factor N. Um, and then finally uh, one extra thing that we haven't seen uh, before is um, this final piece of the puzzle here which is um, to split the parasite drag component into two parts. So CD naught, we've seen that uh, we've seen that parameter before. It's the zero lift uh, drag coefficient. Um, we're going to assume that that's the zero lift drag coefficient in the clean configuration um, in this context. And then we'll add on to that uh, a new parameter CDX, which will be uh, additional parasite drag due to external stores for example like storing weapons on the underside of the wing and so on and so forth so basically what this allows us to do is just calculate the entire equation um, in the clean configuration and then just add on any additional bits of parasite drag if we decide to stick stuff on the exterior of the airplane so this just makes the the formulation of the the drag coefficient a little bit more straightforward so we're just going to pause here for a second to have a look at where the master equation comes from and we're just going to have a quick run through its derivation. Okay, so here we are starting with our equation for excess power. Uh, PS 
uh, standing for um, excess power uh, is, a f is a force multiplied by a velocity. We've seen that before. And this is the equation that we derived last time when talking about our specific excess power diagrams. Um, so we're going to start here, divide through by uh, air speed v. So eliminating the v from this side uh, gives us a 1 over v here and uh, eliminates this v here. So from this point here, we can make our replacements that we just discussed for the thrust term, the weight term, and the drag term, and basically replace those expansions into the left-hand side here. You'll notice that there aren't any replacements to make on the right-hand side. So if we do that, we've got um, alpha TSL replacing T, beta W takeoff here and here, and then the expansion for the drag um, magnitude of drag here. So this is our expansion for the drag coefficient, dynamic pressure and S and the right hand side remains the same. So the final thing that we need to do here is replace the lift coefficient inside our drag coefficient expansion with the expression which depends on the load factor N. Um, but in the same way as we replace W in this expression, we have uh, W appearing in our CL uh, e equation as well, so we'll go ahead and replace that with beta W takeoff to get this, and then this will be replaced into here and here. So that's what this uh, big uh, equation is right here. So to get from here with all of the expansions into the master equation in the form that you've seen it on the slides, um, essentially all we have to do is uh, take all of this um, this term here to the right hand side so this negative will become a positive over here and then multiply the both sides by beta so that will eliminate beta from the left hand side and bring it to the top on the right hand side and then divide through by alpha both sides too so eliminating alpha from the left side divides the right hand side by alpha so here it is multiply up by beta, multiply, uh, divide down by alpha, and then all I've done is basically uh, taken this QS over beta WTO out the front of this term. Here is the quadratic term and the linear term of WTO over S, and then this is the stuff that was on the right-hand side previously. So uh, nothing more than just some simple algebra there, but um, as we just discussed, the final step is to potentially include the expansion for our parasite drag coefficient. So this is the um, parasite drag in the clean configuration, and this is uh, the excess parasite drag if we have stuff stuck on the exterior of the airplane. So, um, so let's just have a look what's going on here. Essentially, we have uh, a quadratic equation. So the left-hand side is what's called the thrust-to-weight ratio. TSL over W takeoff, so thrust to weight ratio. And then on the right hand side, we have essentially a quadratic in wing loading WTO over S squared, WTO over S plus some constant. So essentially, this is an equation of the form uh, Y equals um, some square term plus some linear term plus a constant. So um, when we plot this master equation on our constraint diagram, you'll see that it just looks like a quadratic curve. So now having seen where the master equation comes from, um, you can see an example constraint diagram here at the bottom of this slide where we're plotting the thrust to weight ratio on the, the y-axis and the um, wing loading on the uh, x-axis. So those curved, uh, those curved boundaries um, are a result of that master equation being essentially a quadratic in wing loading. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about where some of those other constraints come from, but the idea here, here is to build up, for example, all of those requirements in the table on the left-hand side there, convert those into constraint lines to be plotted on the constraint diagram so that we can identify the solution space which is highlighted there in, in blue. So basically any point within the solution space satisfies all of the requirements at the same time. 
uh, and then it's up to us to uh, pick a spot in that solution space that basically optimizes the design. So um, it's probably not a good idea, right, to choose a point in the solution space that uh, has you know an unnecessarily high thrust to weight ratio or indeed an unnecessarily high um, wing loading so typically the kind of lower boundaries of this solution space are, are optimal and, and, and uh, correspond to the most efficient uh, design points so we'll have a look at uh, an actual example of this in a minute and actually put some numbers on these and plot some example curves but this this kind of just highlights uh, the methodology for for the process right take a list of requirements convert them into constraint lines plot them on the constraint diagram and identify the solution space um, uh, one caveat to this is that sometimes um, two or more design requirements can contradict each other so in this case there will be no solution space at all um, so in this case obviously we need to go back to the drawing board and either relax one of the constraints or try to eliminate some of the constraints uh, so that we actually have a solution space or or or, or have a design which which is able to satisfy all of the requirements at the same time Okay, so let's have a quick look at how we um, formulate the takeoff and landing constraints, starting with the takeoff. So uh, these are pretty easy to derive. Um, we just start with um, our takeoff distance equation, STO, that we have derived in a previous class. Make the replacements for um, thrust, uh, weight, drag, and lift coefficients, as we did in the derivation of the master equation. And we should be able to formulate a, uh, an equation with the thrust to weight ratio on the left hand side and the wing loading on the right hand side. Um, something here just to be aware of is that um, we're making an assumption that lift is approximately zero before rotation. So um, this may or may not be the best assumption to make, um, for example if we have a highly cambered airfoil or if we have a particularly large offset angle between the horizontal and the cord line for example, but, um, but generally speaking this is a reasonable approximation to make. Uh, again we've used the fact that we're assuming that the takeoff speed, the point at which we rotate, uh, is 20% higher than the stall speed and that the average speed during that whole takeoff roll, so between stationary and 1.2 times the stall speed, can be assumed to be 70% of the final speed. So we've seen those um, assumptions before. That leads us to this takeoff constraint equation at the bottom here, thrust to weight ratio on the left hand side, and now this is just a linear function of the wing loading. So. This, uh, this will just appear as a straight line on the constraint diagram. And so finally here then the landing constraint equation. Again pretty straightforward uh, to derive. We start with our landing distance equation SL. Um, we're assuming that thrust is zero on, on landing so as soon as we touch, touch down we kill the thrust. Um, and you will recall that in this instance we assume that our landing speed is 30% higher than the stall speed just to give us a slight, slightly larger safety margin over the stall on landing and again we're assuming that the average speed between touchdown and stopping to a complete halt right stationary um, is 70% uh, of the landing speed and that gives us this uh, landing constraint equation in the middle of the slide here um, but this can be further simplified if we make certain assumptions so first of all um, if we're assuming that we're landing at a relatively low speed on a dry runway it can be assumed that the wheel braking force is much larger than the aerodynamic drag first of all and therefore 
the uh, top equation there can be simplified even further, getting rid of that drag term in the numerator, um, such that one of those betas in the in the denominator cancels. So now we just have our um, wing loading on the left hand side equal to some constant. And remember that the constraint diagram has the wing loading on the x-axis. So if we have essentially x equals a constant on that constraint diagram, this, this uh, line on the graph when we plot it is just going to be like a vertical straight line, right? So anyway, let's uh, take the master equation and the takeoff and landing constraint equations and let's do an example where we put it all together and plot an example constraint diagram. Okay, so let's say that we are designing a multi-role fighter aircraft and that the design requirements are such that, um, so listed here in the table at the bottom of the screen, so we have a combat mission radius of 400 miles, we have some weapons to carry around, um, we have a takeoff and landing distance requirement, so they should be no more than 2,000 feet uh, respectively, and we should be able to achieve a Mach number of 1.8, um, a certain turn rate, so 18 degrees per second at a specific Mach number and altitude, so 0.9 and 20,000 feet. Um, we have uh, specific excess power uh, requirements and we should be able to sustain a 4G turn at Mach 1.2, 20,000 feet, and also a 9G turn at Mach 0.9 at 5,000 feet. So what we're going to do is calculate and plot these constraint lines for those requirements. So first of all, the, the two turns, two combat turns, the 9G and 4G turns, and then also formulate constraints for the takeoff and landing distances. So in order to do this, we're going to have to make some assumptions, which are uh, listed here. We're given the empty weight and the fuel capacity. Um, we're going to assume that we are taking off with maximum fuel and landing with uh, fuel tanks empty. <coughs> we are given the thrusts at sea level 5 and 20,000 feet. Um, we're going to assume that we are landing and taking off from a runway at sea level. We're given uh, drag coefficients in the subsonic and supersonic regimes. We are given the maximum lift coefficient in the takeoff and landing configurations um, and some parasite drag uh, terms for takeoff and landing configurations as well. So uh, because these lift and drag coefficients for takeoff and landing are the same, or we're assuming them that they are the same, obviously we're assuming that the, the aircraft has the the identical flap settings for both landing and takeoff and we are to assume a rolling friction coefficient of 0.03 and a braking coefficient of 0.5. So let's have a look how we put all of this information together, um, formulate some constraint equations and then have a look at how we plot them to identify the solution space. Alright so I'm effectively going to require uh, four equations to satisfy uh, these constraints, right? I'm going to need um, a, two different master equation uh, formulations to satisfy these two combat turn requirements, and then I'll require a um, constraint equation for takeoff and a constraint equation for landing. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate all of the coefficients to go into the first uh, two master equations first. So I'll calculate alpha, beta, um, I'll also calculate the airspeed V for both uh, based on the Mach numbers given and also the, the two different dynamic pressures at those two conditions. So first thing I'm going to do, calculate alpha at 5,000 feet uh, to satisfy this constraint. 
and also alpha at 20,000 feet to satisfy the second combat turn uh, requirement. So this will be effectively thrust at 5,000 feet divided by thrust at sea level, and this one will be thrust at 20,000 feet divided by thrust at sea level. So uh, these values are given, right? Over here, I've got thrust at sea level, five and 20,000 feet, so I can just input those. So, um, so 24,920 pounds at 5,000 feet divided by sea level, 17,800. Uh, that gives me a thrust lapse ratio of 1.4. And then at 20,000 feet, I've got 17 triple four, 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 divided by thrust at sea level again, so 17,800, giving me a thrust lapse ratio at 20,000 feet of 0.98. So that's the thrust lapse ratio is dealt with. Uh, let's do the weight fraction beta next. So beta weight fraction um, will be the maneuver weight over uh, the takeoff weight. So I'm using the maneuver weight as given in the table down here. The maneuver weight, W man, is the aircraft weight with 50% of internal fuel. So we are, con we are performing a maneuver, right, a combat turn. So I'm going to use the maneuver weight to calculate my weight fraction. So let's say from the table, W man, the maneuver weight, is empty W plus 50% fuel. And we're given the empty weight, uh, it's 10,500 pounds, so 10,500 pounds. And we're given the fuel capacity of 7,000 pounds, so I'm gonna add on half of that. So 3,500 pounds of fuel, giving me a maneuver weight of 14,000 pounds. So, uh, therefore, um, my weight fraction will be maneuver weight, 14,000 pounds, divided by my takeoff weight. Now, takeoff weight, we're assuming from the problem statement that we have a, a maximum fuel on takeoff. So this will just be empty plus 100% fuel. So we know empty weight, same as we used above, 10,500 pounds, and the maximum fuel quantity was 7,000, giving me a total takeoff weight of 17,500 pounds. So 17,500 pounds goes in here, giving me a weight fraction of 0.8. Okay, so I've got my uh, thrust lapse ratios, I've got my weight fraction. Next, I need to calculate the dynamic pressure Q. So we know, don't we, that Q is a half rho V squared, and we need two different um, we need two different Qs, essentially one at 5,000 uh, 5, feet and one at 20,000 feet, and at different Mach numbers. And we know Q is a function of V, so um, we need to first of all convert M into V at those altitudes. So let's do that next. Um, Mach number V over A, and let's say uh, therefore, V at 5,000 feet will be MA, and at 5,000 feet we have a Mach number of 0.9 multiplied by local speed of sound at 5,000 feet. 
So we're going to go into our standard atmosphere table, read across, find the local speed of sound. So 1097.1 feet per second, giving us a uh, airspeed of 987.4 feet per second. Then we can do the same thing at 20,000 feet, 20,000 feet MA. Our Mach number is 1.2 this time, and the local speed of sound at 20,000 feet, standard atmosphere table, read across, 1036.9 feet per second, giving us an airspeed of 1244.28 feet per second second. Now we're in a position to calculate our dynamic pressure Q. Q is a half rho V squared. So therefore we should have a Q at 5,000 feet based on this speed and a Q at 20,000 feet based on this speed. So a half rho at 5,000 feet again into the standard atmosphere table read across um, where are we? Here. So, point double O two zero four eight slug per foot cubed, uh, multiplied by our airspeed nine eighty seven point four feet per second squared, giving us a dynamic pressure of nine ninety eight point three. Uh, pounds per square foot. Do the same thing at 20,000 feet, a half row back into the standard atmosphere table, point double O one two six seven this time, slug per foot cubed into our airspeed that we just calculated, point two eight feet per second squared, giving us a dynamic pressure of nine. 80.8 pounds per square foot. So from there, we should be able to plug all of this information into our master equation, uh, which we will look at right now. All right, so here is our master equation. Um, a couple of assumptions before we begin. First of all, we're assuming that our um, our combat turns, the subsonic and the supersonic ones, are going to be at constant altitude and constant speed. So 5,000 feet Mach 0.9, 20,000 feet Mach 1.2 respectively. So if we are at constant altitude, dH by dt, we can assume a zero. Let's say constant altitude. And if we're at constant speed, dV by t, can also be assumed to be zero. So let's say constant uh, speed. Um, then also, let's assume too that we have no exterior bits stuck on the outside of the airplane such that uh, our additional parasite drag, we can assume zero two. And one final thing that you will notice, of course, is that we are plotting thrust to weight ratio versus uh, wing loading. And we have this quadratic expression in wing loading, but we also have this right here, which is just one over the wing loading, WTO over S, isn't it? So um, this can be looked at two ways, we either plot a quadratic in this or we use this to cancel one of these and that one. So you'll see what this looks like in a minute. So let's start uh, putting together our uh, master equation. So let's say um, combat turn number one. So this is the subsonic one, the Mach 0.9 one. We will have uh, our thrust to weight ratio on the left hand side. We calculated beta and alpha just now. Then we have calculated also uh, Q, 
uh, is that correct? 998.3, yes, pounds per feet squared over beta, uh, which was 0.8. Then let's keep this in this form for now, from here. Uh, K1, well, we're given the drag polar for all of this, these turns. So here's the first drag uh, coefficient in the subsonic turn. So 0.121 into uh, the uh, load factor, so 9G. 9, uh, 9 into 0 0.8, which is beta, over Q again, 998.3 feet squared. Uh, let's see, ah, WTO over S, of course, squared. So here, plus K2, Here's our K2 term, negative 0.0094. So this term is actually going to be negative 0.0094. Load factor again, beta again, Q again, 998.3 pounds per feet squared, WTO over S, so like that, and then just CD naught added on, which is 0 0.0243. So, um, when we calculate all of this and um, uh, calculate these expansions and cancel this term with one of these and that, we should get uh, 0.57 into 7.9, 6.29 times 10 to the negative 6, TO over S, 6.78 times 10 to the negative 5, plus 0.0243 S over WTO. So from here. Um, so this is our master equation for combat turn number one. Combat turn number two is the supersonic one. Well, we're not gonna uh, do the same thing, but we've already calculated uh, the um, coefficients alpha, beta, W, etc. So it's going to have a very similar form to this one. It's just that the the, uh, the numerical values is just going to be slightly different. Um, essentially, combat turn one and combat turn two are um, they're both functions. So number one and number two are functions of the form y equals a x plus b one over x plus c right where y is our thrust to weight ratio and x is our weight uh, fraction w t o over s so essentially these two master equations when we plot it on the constraint diagram, WTO over S, and our thrust to weight ratio here, they're just going to be equations corresponding to like this type of curve. And if you actually calculate the values, this one is the subsonic uh, turn, so number one. And this is the supersonic uh, turn number two here. And so we know that to satisfy these two constraints, obviously they're going to have their 
their opposites down here as well, but we don't care about that down there. We need to satisfy both of these constraints, then we need to be essentially above both of these curves to satisfy those requirements. So we can get rid of everything below these two curves. So get rid of all of that stuff. And so our solution space will be this area right here. This will be our solution space. Like that. So now let's have a look at how we add to this constraint diagram our takeoff and landing constraints too. Okay, so here is our uh, takeoff constraint equation. Because we're assuming that we're taking off from a runway uh, at sea level, both our weight fraction and our uh, thrust lapse ratio will both be equal to one because alpha is um, essentially going to be thrust at sea level over thrust at sea level, and our weight fraction is going to be weight at takeoff over weight at takeoff. So both of those are going to be one, which will make our math a lot easier. Um, then our takeoff distance, which is going to go in the denominator of this term, STO, we've told, been told in the problem statement that that should be at most 2,000 feet. So that's going to go into the denominator here. I guess we need acceleration due to gravity too in English units, 32.2 feet per second squared. Um, what else do we know? We're going to need CL max. That's given for takeoff and landing as 1.37. So let's put that in there as well. Um, CD naught. We need that for the numerator of this term. Uh, let's see. CD naught for takeoff and landing is 0 0.05. Um, so that's in the takeoff and landing configuration. Uh, mu, which is our rolling coefficient of friction, we've been, we've been told to assume that that is 0.03. And so I think the only thing that we require now is rho uh, for the denominator of this term, so rho at sea level, standard atmosphere table, 0 0.002377 slug per foot cubed. So if we put all of that stuff together, essentially we're just going to have a linear equation of the form y is ax plus a constant here from these two terms. Again, where y is our thrust to weight ratio and x is our weight fraction. Um, so the takeoff constraint, if we plot it, thrust, ratio, uh, thrust to weight ratio versus wing loading will look just like a straight line, right? Where we get rid of everything underneath it. So where that intersects with our other two curves from the previous two master equations, we'll have a look at in a second. But um, essentially, uh, we've just got a linear function of the uh, uh, weight, uh, the wing loading for this particular uh, takeoff constraint. All right, so finally here is our a landing equation. We have our wing loading on the left-hand side and then a bunch of stuff on the right side that we either know or can recalculate, uh, namely the, um, the weight, rate, uh, weight fraction beta. So this will now be our landing weight over our takeoff weight. So, um, we calculated the takeoff weight previously, 17 and a half thousand pounds, and then we're assuming that we're landing with tanks empty and we have 7,000 pounds worth of fuel to burn, so we're landing with 10 and a half thousand pounds remaining. Uh, so that gives us a weight fraction of 
Everything else uh, should be the same, I think, because we're assuming again that our landing distance is going to be no more than 2,000 feet. Um, G, well, that's going to be the same. Rho is going to be the same uh, because we are assuming that we're taking off and landing at a runway at sea level. CL max is the same for both takeoff and landing configurations, 1.37. So that should be the same. Um, so the only thing that's different here now is our mu value, which is no longer the rolling friction coefficient. This will be our braking coefficient in this formulation. So that will be updated to 0.5. But essentially, this is going to give us an equation of the form wing loading equals a constant. So when we plot um, uh, thrust to weight ratio versus wing loading. So we've got an equation essentially of x equals a constant, right, where x is our wing loading, WTO over s plotted on the x-axis. So this is just going to give us a vertical line, right, x equals a constant, where we're assuming that our maximum takeoff distance is 2,000 feet, so we want to basically get rid of everything that's above that for our solution space. So now that we have all four um, constraint equations, we're just going to have a quick look at how it all, all plots together and identify our solution space. All right, so if we put all of that together on our constraint diagram, so plotting thrust to weight ratio versus wing loading, you can see that we have our two uh, master equation curves which corresponded to our subsonic and supersonic turn requirements. Um, then as it turns out uh, for these uh, values given in this example the takeoff constraint doesn't actually interfere with the solution space at all it's trivially satisfied presumably because we have more than adequate thrust to satisfy that 2000 foot takeoff requirement. And uh, the landing constraint intersects somewhere here. So obviously we're going to get rid of everything uh, to the left of that. Um, so that's limited by obviously our braking coefficient and our, um, uh, our weight fraction too. So if we have a lower weight fraction, obviously when we're landing, if we're lighter, we can brake quicker. So um, this is our solution space here. And this identifies basically all possible solutions which satisfy all four of those uh, requirements at the same time. Um, it would now be uh, our job to basically optimize this um, for a choice of thrust to weight ratio um, versus uh, wing loading. So it wouldn't be optimal to choose a point up in here somewhere. Maybe this is the optimum point or maybe it's somewhere over here on this boundary. Um, that would be uh, um, that would be dependent on our uh, optimization um, line for for uh, for uh, designing our aircraft to these requirements. So uh, that is it for um, uh, the constraint analysis uh, class. Um, thanks for watching.